Hello and welcome to today's episode on part 2 of Product Pricing Strategies. My name is Rayan Zohur and the subject expert is Dr. Arshia Hussain, PhD in Human Resource Management and teaching in the Department of Commerce and Business Studies, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Companies generally adjust their basic prices to accommodate differences between their customers and the changing situations. There are six different strategies that adjust for prices. In part one, we discussed discount and allowance pricing. Today, we will discuss the other five price adjustment strategies. Companies sometimes adjust their basic prices to accommodate differences in customers, products and locations. While using segmented pricing, the company markets and sells its product or service at different price levels. The difference in pricing, however, is not based on difference in costs. Segmented pricing exists in several forms. Customer segment pricing, the company charges different prices for the same product or service from different customers. An example of this is when museums give a discount to senior citizens and students. Another example is the price charged for entering historical monuments for domestic customers and international customers in India. Product form pricing. Different versions of the same product are priced differently. However, this difference is not based on the costs. For example, a company selling washing machines would price its most expensive model with additional features at a significantly higher price. But the cost of adding those features is very little. Location pricing. Companies sometimes charge different prices for the same product at different locations, although the cost of offering the product remains the same. An example of this is that theatres charge different prices for their seats based on the preference of the audience for different locations. Time pricing. Companies change their prices based on the season, the month, the day and sometimes even the hour. An example of this is public utility companies who charge their customers based on the time of the day. Their weekday and weekend prices are different too. Hotels and resorts give seasonal discounts to their customers. Certain conditions must exist in order to make segmented pricing an effective strategy. The market must be such that it can be segmented and the segments must show different levels of demand. Customers of the segment that are paying a lower price should not be able to resell the product to the customers from the segment who are paying a higher price. Competitors should not be in a position to undersell the company to the segment that is paying a higher price. The cost of segmenting the market and monitoring it should not exceed the additional revenue earned from the price difference. The segmented pricing needs to follow all the applicable laws. The segmented prices must reflect real differences in the perceived value among customers. 
if this is not followed, it will lead to resentment among the customers. The price of a product tells the consumer something about it. A lot of consumers use price as an indicator of the quality of that product. For example, a bottle of perfume priced at rupees 5000 might contain perfume worth rupees 200 only. And yet, some customers would be willing to pay rupees 5000 as the price indicates something special. When sellers use psychological pricing, they consider the psychology of prices and not just the economics. A study done on the relationship between price and quality perceptions of cars by Gary Erickson and Johnny Johansson found out that consumers perceived more expensive cars as better quality cars. In the same study, they found that higher quality cars are perceived to be priced higher than they actually are. When consumers are given the opportunity to judge the quality of a product by examining it or basing their judgment on past experience with it, they use price less to judge the quality. When consumers are unable to evaluate the quality due to lack of information or skill, then price becomes an important factor for quality assessment. Reference pricing is another aspect of psychological pricing. These are prices that customers have in their head and refer to when they are looking at a specific product. The reference price could be arrived at due to several reasons. They include observing current prices, referring to past prices and assessing their own buying situation. Sellers can use these reference prices and influence customers while pricing their product. For example, a company could place its product next to a more expensive product, suggesting that it belongs to the same class. Large department stores often sell clothing for women in separate areas, differentiating on the basis of price. It is assumed that clothes sold in the more expensive area of the department store are of better quality. Companies influence the customer's reference price by another method, that is by quoting a high MRP and then discounting the product. By doing so, they suggest that the product was originally priced much higher and is of better quality. Very small price differences can also suggest differences in competing products. For example, a mobile phone priced at 11,800 rupees compared to another phone priced at 12,000 rupees. The difference in price is only 200 rupees. However, the psychological difference could be much greater. Some consumers could see the first phone in the range of 11,000 rupees while the second one in the range of 12,000 rupees. However, the first phone is more likely to be seen as a bargain, while the second one would be seen as better quality. During promotional pricing, companies often price their products below its regular price and sometimes even below its cost price. This pricing is temporary and can be seen in different forms. Department stores sometimes price certain products at exceptionally low prices in an attempt to attract customers to the store. When customers come to the store, they end up buying a lot of other products at regular or marked up prices. Sometimes sellers use special event pricing during a certain period of the year to attract a larger number of customers. We see heavy discounts after the festival season of Diwali. This is done to attract customers back to the stores. Some manufacturers offer a cash discount to customers who buy a certain amount of products within a limited period of time. Promotional pricing, however, can have negative effects too. When it is used frequently and all competitors start using this strategy, it can create customers who wait for sales and buy only during those periods. Regular and frequent promotional pricing can erode a brand's value in the eyes of buyers. A company needs to decide on how it is going to price its products for customers located in different parts of the country or the world. 
a company could decide to charge its customers who live in distant places a higher price so that it can cover the higher shipping costs. In such a case, there could be a risk of losing business. On the other hand, the company could charge all its customers the same price. For a situation like this, there are five broad strategies that a company could use. Let us assume there is a company called Steel, manufacturing steel products and is located in Haryana and sells its products all across India. The cost of transportation is high and affects all companies in this industry. Steel wants to adopt a geographical pricing policy. It has an order of a 10,000 rupees from three specific customers. Customer A, who is located in Haryana, customer B, located in Madhya Pradesh, and customer C, located in Tamil Nadu. One option for steel is to ask all its customers to pay the transportation costs from its factories to their own location. All three customers will need to pay 10,000 rupees, which is its factory price and the cost of transporting the products. This is called the FOB origin pricing. The products are placed free on board, FOB, a carrier. The title of the product and the responsibility passes to the buyer at that point and they pay the actual transportation costs from the factory to where they want the products delivered. The disadvantage of this pricing is that the distant customer, in our case the customer in Tamil Nadu, will pay a significantly higher price for the same products. If the primary competitors of steel were in Tamil Nadu, they would definitely outsell steel in that state. The competitor will actually outsell steel in all of South India, while steel would be able to dominate the market in North India. Another method is uniform delivery pricing, which is the opposite of FOB pricing. In this method, the company charges the same price, including transportation, from all its customers, regardless of how far or how close they live. The average transportation cost is calculated and factored in the price of the product. In this case, the Haryana customer would prefer to buy from another local company that uses FOB origin pricing. However, steel has a better chance of selling to customers in Tamil Nadu and other distant locations. This method of pricing is relatively easy to administer and allows the company to advertise its price nationally. A third method is zone pricing and is in between FOB origin pricing and uniform delivered pricing. The company divides the total geographical market in two or more zones. All customers within a certain zone are charged a single total price. The further the zone is from the factory, the higher the price. In this way, buyers within a price zone receive no price advantage from the company. However, a customer who falls just within the boundary of a zone pays lesser than the customer who falls in the next zone but is only a few kilometers away from the first customer. The price difference is sometimes significant. The fourth approach uses basing point pricing. The seller chooses a certain city as a basing point and the price for all customers is calculated based on transportation costs from that city to the customer's location. It does not matter where the products are actually shipped from. For example, if the company sets New Delhi as the basing point, all customers would be charged based on transportation costs to their location from New Delhi and not from the locations where the product was actually manufactured and shipped. This means that a customer of steel who is located just a few kilometers from the manufacturing facility will have to pay for transportation costs from New Delhi. This approach increases the price for customers who are located close to the factory and decreases it for those who are close to the basing point. If the manufacturers use the same city as their basing point, the price of that product including transportation charges would be the same for all customers and there would be no price competition based on location.
some companies create multiple basing points in order to increase flexibility. They charge the customer for transportation based on the basing point city that is closest to their location. Finally, a company that wants to do business with a specific customer or a specific geographical location could use freight absorption pricing. This strategy allows the seller to absorb all or some part of the actual transportation charges so that they can acquire the desired business. Freight absorption pricing is generally used for market penetration and also to hold on to markets that are increasingly competitive. Companies that sell their products in the international market need to decide the price they will sell at in different countries where they operate. A company could decide on a uniform price across the world. An example of this is Boeing which sells its jetliners at almost the same price all over the world. They have the same price in the United States, in Europe and even in a third world country. However, most companies do not do this and adjust their prices to reflect local market conditions and accommodate cost considerations. The price that a seller decides to charge in a specific country depends on several factors. They include competitive situations, economic conditions, regulations, laws and the development of the wholesale and retail system. The perceptions of consumers and their preferences could vary from one country to another and calls for a difference in prices. In some cases, a seller might have different marketing objectives in different geographical markets and would require a different pricing strat strategy for each of them. For example, if Sony were to introduce a new product in highly developed countries which have mature markets with the goal of gaining quick market share, they would need to follow a penetration pricing strategy. However, if they were to enter a less developed market, and decide to target smaller price sensitive segments, a market skimming pricing strategy would give them better results. Costs are an important factor in calculating and setting prices in the international market. Prices for the same product are sometimes vastly different in different countries. For example, a pair of Levi's jeans could be twice as much in Tokyo than it is in the United States and even more expensive in Paris. A Gucci handbag selling for $150 in Italy could be selling for $400 in the United States. In some cases, the difference in price is a result of different marketing strategies or different market conditions. However, in most cases, the difference is because of higher costs of selling in a foreign market. There could be additional costs of modifying the product based on the needs or preferences of buyers in that country. Transporting the product, insurance costs, taxes, import duties, fluctuations in the exchange rate of the currency, higher distribution costs, all these add up and lead to an increase in the final cost of selling the product in a foreign market. Once a company develops its pricing structures and strategies, it might face situations where it needs to initiate price changes or respond to a price change by its competitor. In some cases, the company might be required to initiate a price cut and in other cases, a price increase. It is essential for the company to anticipate possible buyer and competitor response before they make these changes. Initiating price cuts. There could be several situations that lead a company to initiate price cuts. One such situation is excess capacity. The company needs to sell more and has not been able to achieve this through product improvement, increased sales efforts or other methods. They will need to cut prices. 
Another situation leading to price cuts is falling market share due to strong price competition. A company might cut prices in an effort to dominate the market through lower costs. A company might lower its costs enabling them to initiate price cuts and attempt to gain a larger market share which will further cut costs due to larger volume. Initiating price increases. Sometimes companies need to increase prices. This is often resented by customers, dealers and even their own sales staff. However, a successful increase in prices can increase profits to a large extent. An important factor in price increase is inflation. Increasing costs can squeeze profit margins and over a period of time, a price increase becomes inevitable. Another factor in price increase is an increase in demand. When a company is unable to supply the product to all their customers, they can safely increase prices. Buyer reactions to price changes. When prices are either lowered or increased, it affects buyers, competitors, suppliers, and distributors. Significant price cuts could lead the customer to believe that the company is replacing that model of the product or that there is some fault with the product and it is not selling well. They might feel that the quality has been reduced and it might be a good idea to wait for the prices to fall further. Similarly, a price increase would generally lower sales, but they could have some positive meaning for the buyers. The customer might feel that the product is of a higher quality and is selling very well. They might rush to buy the product thinking that there would be more price increases and they might not be able to afford the product in the future. Competitor reactions to price changes. A company considering price changes needs to worry about its competitors as well. In a situation where the number of competitors are small, the product is uniform and the buyers are well informed. Competitors are very likely to respond to the price change. Competitors react in different ways and it is important for a company to assess how the competition would react to their price change. This could be complex as the competitor could also interpret the price change in several different ways. It might feel that the company is trying to gain a larger market share or that the company is not doing too well and is trying to boost its sales. When there are many competitors, the company needs to assess the likely reaction of each of them. Competitors generally do not behave in a similar way. This is due to differences in their size, their market share or their policies. Companies generally adjust their basic prices to accommodate differences between their customers and the changing situations. There are six different strategies that adjust for prices. Discount and allowance pricing, segmented pricing, psychological pricing, promotional pricing, geographical pricing, and international pricing. Once a company develops its pricing structures and strategies, it might face situations where it needs to initiate price changes or respond to a price change by its competitor. In some cases, the company might be required to initiate a price cut and in other cases, a price increase. It is essential for the company to anticipate possible buyer and competitor response before they make these changes. This is all we have for today. Hope the session was informative. We will meet again in the next episode with a new topic. Till then, take care and goodbye.